From abandoned souls, God demands complete surrender to His grace. We must keep ourselves detached from all we feel or do if we are to travel along His path and live only for God and the duties of the present moment. We must stop all imaginings about the future, keep our attention on what is happening now, and not bother about anything that has gone before or what may follow. I imagine that God's will always governs you. You will then have some inner prompting which makes you say, I feel drawn toward this person or this book. I would like to give another person some advice or ask for some myself. I wish to complain about something, to open my heart to someone and in turn receive confidence, to give something away or to perform a certain action. We should at once obey these promptings of grace without relying on our reason or considering the matter at all. We must consider ourselves to whatever God wishes and for as long as He wishes and yet never get personally involved in them. In this condition of self-abandonment, the will of God moves us because He dwells with us and it should completely replace everything on which we should rely for strength and support. There is never a moment when there is not some virtue to be practiced, and, as abandoned souls, we shall remember all that we have learned through reading and discussion, so that the most obedient of novices could not fulfill her duties better. This is why we are sometimes impelled to read various books and prompted to make some comment and give our opinion on the most trifling matter. At one moment, God gives us the desire to instruct ourselves in what, at a later moment, will help us to act virtuously. But whatever we do, we do it because we are drawn to this particular action without knowing why. All we can say can be reduced to this. I feel drawn to write, to read, to question and examine. I obey this feeling, and God, who is responsible for it, thus builds up within me a kind of spiritual store which in the future will develop into a core of usefulness for myself and for others. This is what makes it essential for us to be simple-hearted, gentle, compliant, and sensitive to the slightest breath of these almost imperceptible promptings. If we have abandoned ourselves, there is only one rule for us, the duty of the present moment. The soul is as light as a feather, as fluid as water, simple as a child, and as lively as a ball in responding to all the impulses of grace. We are like molten metal, which takes the shape of the mold into which it is poured and can just as easily assume any form God wishes to give us. We are like the air which stirs continually, or water which fills every vessel no matter what its shape. We must offer ourselves to God like a clean, smooth canvas, and not worry ourselves about what God may choose to paint on it, for we have perfect trust in Him, have abandoned ourselves to Him, and are so busy doing our duty that we forget ourselves and all our needs. The more closely we devote ourselves to our little task, which is so simple, so secret, and so hidden and apparently so paltry, the more does God enrich and adorn it. God works wonders for those He loves. It is true that a canvas simply and blindly offered to the brush feels at each moment only the stroke of the brush. It is the same with a lump of stone. Each blow from the hammer of the sculptor's chisel makes it feel, if it could, as if it were being destroyed. As blow after blow descends, the stone knows nothing of how the sculptor is shaping it. All it feels is a chisel chopping away at it, cutting it, and mutilating it. For example, 
Let's take a piece of stone destined to be carved into a crucifix or a statue. We might ask it, what do you think is happening to you? And it might answer, don't ask me. All I know is that I must stay immovable in the hands of the sculptor, and I must love him and endure all he inflicts on me to produce the figure he has in mind. He knows how to do it. As for me, I have no idea what he is doing, nor do I know what he will make of me. But what I do know is that his work is the best possible. It is perfect. I welcome each blow of his chisel as the best thing that could happen to me, although, if I am to be truthful, I feel every one of these blows is ruining me, destroying me, and disfiguring me. But I remain unconcerned. I concentrate on the present moment, think only of my duty, and suffer all that this master sculptor inflicts on me without knowing his purpose or fretting about it. Yes, you frank and precious souls, leave to God what is his business, and carry on peacefully with your work. Be quite sure that whatever happens to your spiritual life or to your activities in the world is always for the best. Let God act and abandon yourself to him. Let the chisel and the brush do their work, even though the brush covers the canvas with so many colors that, instead of a picture, it seems there is only a dot. Let us work together with the will of God by a steady and simple submission, a complete forgetfulness of self and concentration on our duties. Let us go straight ahead. Never mind the lack of a map. Ignore the lie of the land and take no notice of the places you pass through. Keep going and you will attain all you desire. Everything will be given to you if, with love and obedience, you seek God's kingdom and his righteousness. There are many people who are uneasy and ask, Who will guide us toward that mortification of self which will lead us to perfect holiness? Well, leave them to ransack books in an effort to find a formula to help them. Let us stay united with God by love and let us walk blindly along the clear, straight path of duty. His angels protect you, and if he wants more from you, he will let you know.